Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FI23 earnings conference call of Natural Capsules Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the opening remarks conclude. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Abhishek Mehra from TIL Advisors. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Mehra. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining this Q4 FI23 earnings conference call of Natural Capsules Limited. The results and investor updates have been emailed to you and are also available on the stock exchanges. In case anyone does not have a copy of the same, please do write to us, and we'll be happy to send it over to you. To take us through the results of this quarter and answer your questions, we have with us today Mr. Sunil Mumbra, Managing Director, and Mr. Raj Kishore Prasad, Chief Financial Officer. We'll be starting the call with a brief overview of the business and the financial performance in Q4 FI23, which will be followed by the Q&A session. I would like to remind you all that everything said in this call, reflecting any outlook for the future, which can be construed as a forward-looking statement, must be viewed in conjunction with the uncertainties and the risks that the company faces. These uncertainties and risks are included but not limited to what we've mentioned in our annual reports, which you'll find on our company's website. With that said, I'll now hand over the call to Mr. Mundra. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Abhishek. A warm welcome to each and every one of you to Natural Capital Limited's this made an earnings conference call. It's a pleasure to have you all here today. And this is our first ever earnings call. I would like to take this opportunity to provide an overview of our business verticals before delving into the performance highlights of Q4 FI23. At Natural Capsules, we currently operate in two distinct business verticals, capsules and APIs. I will shed some light on each one, starting with our capsule segment. With nearly three decades of experience in this industry, we are proud to say that upon completion of our ongoing CAPEX, we will become the second largest manufacturer of empty hard capsules in India. Our journey in this industry took a significant leap forward in 2019 when we adopted groundbreaking manufacturing technology. This innovation has enabled us to become one of the fastest and most efficient producers of hard empty capsules worldwide. Leveraging this, we expanded our capacities by almost threefold in the past three years operating close to peak utilization levels. As a result, our performance in this vertical has significantly improved, with revenues increasing from almost 60 crores in FI20 to 172 crores in FI23. Furthermore, uh, our operating margin profile has also shifted from around 9% to 20%, leading to a substantial rise in profit after tax from almost one crore to about 18 crores. This remarkable progress uh, can be attributed to the advantages offered by our new generation machines. These machines consume approximately 40% less power per unit manufacture compared to their older counterparts. Moreover, their highly automated nature requires fewer manpower resources, resulting in reduced cost per unit produced. We've also witnessed a significant decrease in rejection rates with only 3% compared to 8% in the older generation machines. Importantly, the manufacturing speed has tripled from 1.5 million capsules per day production to an impressive 5 million capsules per day. Collectively, these factors have contributed to higher efficiencies and profitability for our company. To further enhance our capabilities, we are expanding our capacities by adding HPMC line, which we yield higher realization, and better margin. Now, let's turn our attention to the API vertical. In 2020, we established Natural Biogenex Private Limited as a subsidiary to undertake API manufacturing operations. We have targeted the production of four major APIs and their derivative salts, three of which have received approval under the PLI scheme of the government. Significantly, we will be the sole manufacturer in the country for two of these APIs, considering that they are currently imported in large quantities. Recognizing the immense opportunity to capture the domestic market, we have strategically set up our facility to comply with the regulatory requirements for 
potential exports to regulated markets as well. In line with our expansion plan, we have invested approximately 130 crores in our API business, utilizing a mix of internal accruals at support from HNI investors and around private equity players. Having successfully completed our expansion phase in the past three years, during which we substantially increased our capsule capacity, we are now confident about our growth trajectory. Our aim is to leverage our strong position in the capsule business and rapidly gain domestic market share in the API business by offering cost-effective import substitutes to our customers. Before we delve into the performance of the quarter, I would like to share some positive developments with you. We recently secured an exclusive distribution agreement with a multi-billion dollar corporation for our capsules in the Mexico market. This presents a significant opportunity for us given Mexico's high demand for imported capsules. Sales recognition from this contract is expected to commence in the second quarter of the current financial year. Now, despite the challenging operating environment in the domestic farm circle industry, we have managed to maintain our volumes without experiencing any decline. We believe that the period of declining realization is behind us now, as evidenced by a gradual rebound in realization in Q1 and our anticipation of further increases throughout the year. Additionally, we are making progress in setting up HPMC line with the integration process of the first line already underway. We anticipate the remaining two lines to be operational in the second and third quarter of FI24, respectively. On the API front, we are delighted to announce that we anticipate commencing the sale of small commercial batches from the second quarter, gradually ramping the production from the third quarter. As a result, we have revised our earlier guidance on achieving 50% capacity utilization in the first year, considering the commencement of commercial sales in Q2 FI24. Regarding the production-linked incentive program, uh, we have received government approval and have decided to offer the PLI incentive from FY25. The strategic decision is based on the program being determined by sales quantity. With our confidence in significantly surpassing the volumes of FY24, we anticipate higher incentive in FY25. Furthermore, the removal of minimum 90% capacity utilization condition for eligibility to receive the incentive is a positive development. Now the incentive will apply to any quantity manufactured and sold. So looking ahead in the upcoming financial year, we remain excited about our growth trajectory in both business verticals. The commencement of the HPMC lines is expected to drive top line growth and improve the margins profile of our capsule business. For our API business, our focus will be on rapidly scaling up operations. Before I conclude my remarks and open the floor for questions, I would like to inform you that moving forward, we will ensure the practice of conducting half-yearly conference calls, H1 and H2. This will provide all of you with ample opportunities to interact with us and have your queries resolved. Thank you for your attention. With that, I now invite any questions you may have. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one on their touchstone telephone. If your questions have been answered and you wish to withdraw yourself from the queue, you may enter star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, you may enter star and one. We have the first question from the line of Kesha from Rafsan Investors. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, afternoon. for APIs, uh, yeah, uh, why have we revised the asset terms uh, expected downward to 2x compared to 2.7x, which was in the earlier presentation? See, this has happened mainly uh, due to two reasons. One, of course, is there is a uh, total uh, project cost has gone up in case of uh, assets. Earlier it was around 96 crore anticipated at the time of uh, applying for the PLI back in, in December of 20. Uh, now currently we are ending up with about 130. 
The second reason, of course, uh, is the latest uh, uh, small correction in the pricing of these uh, most of these API products in last one year. Added both together, uh, we are thinking that immediately in the coming FI24 and FI25, we expect it to be around 2x. But going forward, as our reg business starts, um, regulated market supply starts, probably we should be able to achieve the 2.7 to 2.8x. So, sir, and sir, what percentage of Biogenics will be minority share according to the current schedule? And uh, do we rule, rule out any further dilution going, going forward? At this moment, uh, the minority share holding is 10%. 90% is held by the uh, holding company. Going forward, uh, the private equity investors milestones, which he has given for FY27, I think, the dilution, the maximum dilution that could happen would be about 35%. Uh, natural capital will continue to hold about 65.6% or so. so. At this moment, we don't foresee any further dilution in our uh, subsidy cap. Sure, sir. And sir, for uh, uh, so the 130 crore capex, as far as I understand, uh, it's divided in two parts. We are doing phase one, and then uh, on the success of it, we'll commence with phase two. So in FY24 and 25, what capacity utilizations are we looking at on the overall 150 Yeah, so I think originally we had uh, proposed some 50% capacity utilization based on starting in Q1. But since the, 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 there is a change and delay in installation, I mean commissioning of the small scale volume in the large uh, production batches, I think we are now projecting that I, uh, uh, total capacity would be something like, uh, say, still we would try and now achieve 50% of the capacity. Our earlier target was we said we will target 100 crore. Maybe we will now try to achieve 50% of that. So, sir, this 50% uh, would be EBITDA break even, or we will need uh, higher utilizations to reach that? I think so. It should be at least uh, um, in FI24 may not be possible, but FI25 certainly will be cash positive. Okay, and sir, uh, so in for for the offtake part, do we have any contracts ready for validation and subs subsequent soft commitments from clients, or uh, basically I'm trying to get a sense on whether this could come as a source of risk if uh, even if our scale up succeeds. We already have been in touch with the, uh, most of these uh, buyers of these steroidal APIs many of whom are our existing uh, customers for our capsule business. And we have got uh, good response for them. Uh, and I think uh, now that our R&D uh, stability data are available, and in about uh, next uh, five to six weeks, we are launching our small volume kilo lab, so we, 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 we will be able to sell it to them. We have got certain uh, letters of interest and uh, certain kind of commitments also. So we don't find uh, any anything challenging on selling our produce. Sure, sir. I have more questions, but I'll come back in with you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Participants, if you have a question, you may enter star and one. We have the next question from the line of Ashutosh Agarwal from NB India. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you for the opportunity, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my first question is with respect to the margins impact, which uh, we have seen from quarter four majorly. Uh, so what are the future conservative margins uh, we are seeing as per the two months of quarter one and uh, how we are looking at uh, next two quarters like Q1 and Q2? Actually, Q4 margins had come down basically because of that uh, sales realizations uh, had dropped a bit, uh, mm -hmm. and, but we did uh, some sort of a, we could save something on the robbery cost also. Uh, mm -hmm. We had net sales situation coming down differently on domestic and export sales. Domestic did uh, drop a little bit more than the exports. Uh, I feel that uh, the, the drop have bottomed out now. 
domestic realization, whatever drop had to take place is bottomed out. From Q1, we are seeing uh, good green offshoots, and uh, um, we have seen a marginal growth in the realization. And also, the good thing is that in the RM side, also the costs are softening a bit, and we expect a saving about two to three percent there per kilogram of uh, the raw material. So, on whole, I think that uh, uh, the margins are going to improve or coming in next two quarters. Okay, so are we expecting that uh, the margins may come back to the earlier, which were there in the Q1 or Q2 of FI23? Yes, I think with the addition of HPMC line, uh, probably yes, it'll add on a little more margins there. We expect uh, by at least by Q3, Q4, we should get back to the levels what we had achieved last year. Okay, so we are expecting majorly from Q3, Q4 when HPMC will kick in the show. So are we expecting the further delay uh, in the projects because uh, we are seeing those delays uh, as per the economic situation and market situation from the last two, three quarters? Now uh, there is no more delay. HPMC capsule was uh, first of the lines. Actually, these HPMC lines are being tried out for the first time on these new generation machines. High speed mm -hmm. machines. Earlier, we have been producing HPMC on 1 million machines where the capacities were quite limited. And uh, so, uh, because of some technical issues, we had delayed that. Now that the first line is uh, in our facility and uh, technical integration is on, we expect the, um, I think, trial production to begin by third week of June. So, once this line stabilizes and if at all any more new modifications not required, we would immediately ask for the other two lines to come uh, get supply, which we expect that in Q2 and Q3, uh, one line uh, respectively would get added. Okay, so we are expecting that maybe from Q3, the one line of HPMC will start contributing to the revenue conservatively. Yes, no, uh, one line would start from Q1 end, the second line would Q2 end, and third line from Q3 end. So we'll have totally three lines of HPMC uh, by the fourth uh, quarter of this year. Okay, so that will drive our operating margin to to yes, come back absolutely. to twenty percent. Uh, we are expecting that. Yes. Okay. Even uh, otherwise, also gelatin. Also, as I've already said, the drop in uh, the realization in the Q4 of last year has mm -hmm. now bottomed out. Uh, we we have seen. Uh, the feedback from the market and the prices are improving and we hope to get better realization. Our other strategy is to focus more on exports, which always bring about 15 to 18% higher realization. So that is also paying as well. And our uh, increased strength in the marketing team for exports would help us to in improve the net realization. Okay. And uh, my question related to Mexico contract is also there that uh, uh, are we going or, or are we forcing that the Mexico contracts will roll out uh, on the time like on quarter two or is there any chance that it may also get delayed or uh, what kind of uh, opportunities we are looking from the Mexico market if we can get an idea? See, whatever forecast we have given, we have not considered any additional boost from this Mexico contract, but we expect a incremental business of almost about 1.8 billion uh, um, capsules per annum on an average about four containers of 40 feet of going to Mexico, which the company has uh, uh, committed to us. And uh, they're quite large uh, trading house in Mexico. So I think that would give it, as I already mentioned some time back, that uh, exports bring in at least about 15 to 18% yeah. better sales realization. This would definitely improve our bottom line. Okay, so we are expecting on time. Uh, uh, so I'm sorry to interrupt, but we have participants in the queue. Uh, yeah, sure. I will come back to queue. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we move to the next question, we would request participants to limit their questions to three during the initial round. We have the next question from the line of Yoganj Jeswani from Mittal Analytics. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Two uh, quick questions for you. So first is on the incentive structure. So you have mentioned in your presentation also that now the incentive structure uh, doesn't have the requirement of 90% minimum capacity utilization. 
and we have shifted the the incentive scheme from 24 to FY25. So if you could just share a little more color on how uh, the overall incentive structure has changed and the 67 crores that we are supposed to receive, how will this uh, flow to the company? See, the PLI scheme under which we have availed uh, these benefits uh, consists uh, of a period for six years. So initially, the scheme is supposed to have started uh, for chemical uh, uh, I mean molecules. It was 1423 for fermentation 1424. But keeping in mind that uh, uh, most of the fermentation products projects are taking time, government has extended the uh, starting date. Now, uh, now another clarification. Earlier guidelines said that to get 100% incentive, we must uh, meet 90% of the committed capacity, and if we achieve only 80% uh, sales, you will be eligible only for 50%. But, but I believe now the new guidelines have been made in such a way that you will be eligible for uh, the same rate of incentive, whatever the quantity you produce. This this change has been notified recently. Now. Uh, the reason why we switched over the next year is that uh, in the, if we uh, start in the current year, which anyway we are saying that half year will go in uh, achieving the large scale batches, so we would have lost the incentive for the half year. So since the number of uh, duration of the scheme is uh, for six years, and six years could have started either from 24 uh, or 25. So that's why to turn the maximum benefit out of it, we thought that it would be prudent to start from 1425. We still hope to achieve that 67 crores of uh, incentive over a period of six years. Okay. So if I if I understand it correctly, this six year is uh, financial year. So even if you start the last quarter of this financial year, this will still count as one full year. Exactly. Okay. So then it makes sense for us to start freshly from next year. Okay, uh, understood. And the, in terms of the commercial and the trial batches that we are about to start, so um, are we doing this for all three of our certain APIs or is it for just one or two? No, no. So uh, the commercial trial batches uh, are right now going on for the basic uh, uh, APIs like uh, dexamethasone, betamethasone, and prednisolone, and their complete route of synthesis. There are most of these products involve at least about 10 to 11 steps of synthesis and two steps of fermentation. So initially our R&D lab had done with uh, gram batches and went on to kilogram. Now we are uh, scaling up them to about 100 kilo to 200 kilo batches. So for these base API where the complete uh, in-house backward integration is being done, we are uh, trying to scale up uh, step by step to uh, a bigger scale of 100 to 200 kilograms. Now, as far as the derivatives are concerned, so our strategy was to import intermediates from China and convert them into derivatives, put them into stability, make them ready for uh, the marketability. So we are now ready with our at least 16 products, stability data, the tech transfer dossier ready. So we will approach the drug department to get license for them. And once these licenses are with us, we can manufacture and start supplying to customers, those who are ready to take based on our R&D Samples. There are a few customers who would expect the samples from the commercial batches to be evaluated by them internally. For them, the supplies would begin quarterly. All right, understood. So, and so just one clarification on incentives. So earlier, uh, the incentive was linked to the production, and the you know the higher production we do year on year, the incentive will flow in in line with that. But now with this utilization levels uh, as a requirement going away. So these incentives will be based out of what? Will this 67 crore be divided equally for all six years, or is there a, another uh, method of calculating the incentive? Uh, no, you can't. So I think uh, the, the incentive was always fixed per kg. Earlier, there was a condition. We had committed, say, capacity for dexamethasone 10 metric tons, betamethasone 12 metric tons. So earlier, there was a clause which said that we will be eligible for 100 percent of the rate of incentive per kg if we achieve 90 percent capacity. If we achieve only 80 percent, we'll be eligible for 50 percent. So this was the condition which has been now removed. What they are now saying is that you'll be eligible for 100 percent of the incentive irrespective of the percentage of capacity. Of Even if I do 50 percent production out of 10 metric tons of dexamethasone committed capacity, I'll be eligible for 
the hundred percent of the incentive per kg. I hope okay. I have answered. So we we get answered. So we get six rupees per kg uh, on whatever yes. production that we do now. So overall, we yes. are in a better off position. Perfect. Right. Uh, and so, last one question on your Mexico order. So, uh, with this Mexico order coming in, and now I think 20-21 percent of our business is from export. So, this year, do we see the exports turnover to uh, increase substantially, or this will start at a lower base? And since North America is three, three, four percent of our uh, overall sales, this will still be a smaller uh, percentage. So I, I see this way. In the current year, Mexico uh, orders would start kicking in from Q2. Uh, so probably this year we'll see at least a jump from 21 to 27, 28 percent. Next year it could go up to 35 percent. So definitely it is going to give a boost. Good. Um, that's just from my side. So thank you, Nolan. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Shlok Dave from CAO Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm fine. Yes, hello, please. Um, uh, Sunil, sir, ek, uh, just a, uh, just a, if you can repeat the last uh, figures that you gave uh, on the export this year, how much exports have you done? Uh, you mentioned next year they can cross 35%, but how, what was the number for this year? I think it's about uh, 21 to 22 percent, and uh, 22 percent, and uh, probably with this Mexico order coming in, a major focus on exports going up, HPMC getting added. Definitely, right. we are confident. Current year probably right. could increase by five to six percent. Next year, go right. up to 35. Great, sir. Uh, sir, uh, just to summarize everything that you have discussed uh, regarding Q4 results. Whatever has happened is transient in nature. Is my understanding correct? Whatever is whatever like uh, on the uh, realization side happened is transient in nature, probably because of inventory destocking that we are seeing in the domestic market, uh, and things have started normalizing. Uh, uh, realizations have started picking up. At least they have stopped falling. You expect that they will come back, and once you go back to the previous uh, previous uh, realizations, your margins will mean revert to the. Uh, let's say Q3 levels, and whatever changes are happening on the API side, they are just delays, right? Uh, one quarter here, two quarters there, uh, but overall, some total uh, remains the same. Delayed by probably six months uh, on the on the higher side, maybe by a quarter, uh, but overall, the equation remains the same. Yes, your understanding is right uh, as far as the capsule business is concerned. Uh, mm -hmm. domestic excess inventory at all levels, right from the raw material till the finished goods inventory into the hands of retailers. Probably that right. caused a bit of slowdown in the domestic uh, finished formulation industry, which indirectly right. impacted on companies like us. So I think right. that uh, uh, period is now getting over and most of the coming uh, companies are coming back to kind of normalcy in their pickup of uh, raw material. So I right. hope that uh, now, the, the, whatever the price erosion we saw in last uh, quarter or so, probably will come back to normal. We, we saw only in last quarter, as some of the other competitors uh, saw it much earlier. So, right. uh, and uh, we, we see that the trend is reversing. Now, coming to the APIs, your question was, yes, there is a couple of quarters of delay for the larger volume and the, uh, a quarter delay for the smaller volume. That's it. Of course, there is an uh, impact uh, to some extent due to the cost overrun there. One is that, so uh, probably a return might get uh, less as compared to what was committed in the first year or second year. But going right. forward, as we see that our ultimate aim is to what? Is to get into the regulatory ex market. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, export customer. There I don't yeah. foresee any challenges. Even right. in the current year, the, 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 the export import data shows that the prices of these APIs have fallen. But hmm. uh, I would uh, put it, I would interpret it this way. These rates have fallen for the non-registered suppliers uh, uh, quantities. There are two right. types of uh, suppliers of right. 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 Any, any API comes from registered source and unregistered source. Unregistered right. 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 source right. keeps fluctuating. Registered right. source uh, are more or less stable. Huh. More or less stable, yes sir. Agreed. Agreed. Our, agree, agree. our competition or our aim is to supply to those customers who buy from registered source from China. My and guess is that had 
had you guys been supplying already you would not have seen much volatility in your prices had had the api being uh, the unit being commercially supplying to your clients uh, i guess you guys would not have seen massive fluctuations in the in the pricing right uh, no but slope what i would say is this kind of volatility yes we are uh, seeing that there is a, some kind of a correction of 10 to 15% in some of the mm. api pricing but this is also right. transient i would say that next couple of right. quarters china would again uh the back and picking kicking up and uh, the prices would go up but right. what i am saying is that our aim is also ultimately first year we are targeting to meet the uh, category c customers who are very very price sensitive and all that and, and move, up the, yeah, move up the yeah move up the ladder, ladder. Yes. of the yes, yes. Uh, customer right. quality and uh, there the sensitivity to the uh, generic imports unregistered source api imports will be drastically down right so if if we were to take a three year view nothing is right the uh, three years from now whatever was supposed to happen will still happen uh, uh, it's just that uh, in between this inventory destocking has hit the capsule business uh, for a quarter or two and uh, the api uh, the good thing is that what you mentioned about the government uh, notification so one final question uh, on uh, if you can guide because there is uh, uh, i do not really know how the new capsule facilities will ramp up i i i can't figure that out at all uh, so can you give some sort of a volume guidance for the capsule business this time for this year and and uh, also for next year like uh, will the will the ramp up be very very quick there or will it be slow and steady uh, if you can give some idea some understanding is yes, starting q2 uh, how will the ramp up happen for this year and then what will happen next year okay so in fi 23 our actual gross production if you look at the installed capacity with actual gross production we achieved almost 96% we right. we, we uh, our installed capacity is 18 billion we manufactured something like about 90 17.3 billion so in okay. fi 24 we hope to do a similar run rate for gelatin gaps and uh, if hpmc first line starts in q1 and the other two line also come online in next two quarters depending on right. how soon we are able to stabilize the first line we should, right. should be able to add uh, at least 6 uh, months of annual capacity of these hpmc capacity so that ramps up very quickly then so if you have 6 months of availability you can do 6 months of production is that understanding correct sir yeah no I, i said average the first line is running for say 9 months second line for 6 months and third line for 3 months the average of 6 right. months for three lines production could be about 1.2 uh, billion capsules Uh, or right. HPMC, probably that right. will add on to our existing policy. But sir, is the understanding correct that if you have 30 days of availability of that machine, you can do 30 day of production uh, during that period? Yeah, when yeah. the machine is freshly installed, like very new, it's a new machine. You have just installed it, uh, but next 30 days you can actually have 30 days of production. Yeah, but any any machine, any new machine for a production uh, facility. it takes right. some time to stabilize and uh, to arrive at the correct uh, quality parameters but, but that, that won't uh, run into uh, quarters and quarters right that won't take two quarters no, no, to no, stabilize no no we are confident okay. see okay. we have been, we have been manufacturing hpmc capsules for last two decades but what right. we have been doing is on the older generation machines this got it sir machine we are uh, of high speed and uh, new generation yeah. Yeah. understood sir thank you thank you thank you very much sir and i really appreciate uh, you taking your time out sir for the call and then also committing that you will do two calls a year uh, thank you very much i really really appreciate it thank you sir all the best my pleasure sir thank you we have the next question from the line of tushar darwar from regulation 30 please go ahead uh, good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity Uh, so I just wanted to ask that you know there's been a lot of filings on uh, the fundraising that we are doing at a subsidiary level in natural uh, biogenics, and uh, you've been doing the doing it at a valuation of you know anywhere between 200 and 250 crores as you know the cash has started increasing. So uh, my question is that uh, you know so what is the logic for you know such a large fundraise at the subsidiary level, and uh, especially since you know we are now down to around 67% uh, stake in that. especially given the fact that uh, you know we had fully financed the entire api unit from uh, the the rights issue and the, the debt proceeds 
So is there some something new in terms of, you know, the future outlook for that entity that, uh, you know, we're choosing to A, dilute so much and also raise so much capital, which is in excess of what we need for that at, at this point in time? See, we have brought in investors at subsidy level. Uh, as investors are keen to invest only in APA business, actually. So I can say that there are no further plans to dilute at this moment and then, uh, other than those which are already in public domain. Actually, the reason, the rationale behind the raising the capex was uh, for two, three reasons. One is the APA project had undergone uh, some small uh, cost uh, increase. Originally, our cost was about 96 crores. Now it has gone to about 130 crores. And additionally, keeping in mind the current uh, business scenario, the working capital cycles have stretched a bit. So uh, with those requirements in mind, uh, uh, and also that the, the total group is having some kind of a debt now. We didn't want to further, it is, we thought it prudent not to over leverage ourselves, raise some equity to de-risk uh, the business. All right. So, so, so there is no in, you know, no further expansion plans and all which are planned in terms of that entity. It's just something that we are doing to strengthen the balance sheet. Yes, absolutely. At this moment, uh, the, the whatever the funding has been done is basically uh, taking care of all the uh, plans which have been made earlier and uh, are in public domain. And so what is the basis for the 200 crore, you know, 250 crore valuation that we have arrived at, you know, considering that we'll be getting back almost 60, 67 crores from the PLI itself. So any any kind of benchmarks and all you have in terms of, uh, you know, what is the expected revenue at 50% uh, utilization, 100% utilization, what kind of logic is there, sir, in, the, in terms of the valuation we have done the fundraiser? Of course, the valuations have been done with the, uh, the standard... Uh, business practices. Uh, we have uh, uh, given a business forecast for the next five years to the investors and based on those uh, they have arrived at the valuation. And we foresee that the real uh, uh, business growth will happen in third year onwards when the regulated market export business starts. And sir, can you give us a flavor of these forecasts, sir? See, we had already said, initially we said about 2.7 asset turn to start with the year two or three, but now probably we expect around a set turn of about two in the first couple of years, maybe third or fourth year uh, when the direct market uh, business is uh, significantly about 25 to 30% of total revenue, we expect it to go to 2.5 to 2.5. Understood, sir. So my second question, sir, is in terms of the, uh, you know, the guidance that we've been giving for the capsule expansion. So I just wanted to point out that, you know, when your first presentation had come out in November 21, we had, uh, we had guided that, you know, by uh, Q2 FY23, we will have all the three lines up. And uh, once Q2 FY23 got over, you know, the, the, the guidance was revised to, you know, Q4 FY23. And we'd also done a little bit of adjustment on the capacity. And so now that Q4 is over, we have, again, uh, you know, put it forward by two quarters. Now, uh, I understand, sir, that, you know, business circumstances change, but just as a small feedback, maybe you could consider being a little more conservative on the guidance because, you know, that is something which the investors take very, very seriously. We take your input, Tushar. Thank you, sir. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Rohit from I Thought CMS. Please go ahead. <laughs> Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, hi, Mr. Mulder. Thank you for uh, taking my question. Uh, my uh, question was on the capsule side. So, uh, uh, a lot of the other players have also put up capacity uh, in the last uh, maybe a year or two. Uh, so, uh, in India. Uh, so, I mean, uh, uh, you, in your comments, have said that this. Uh, realization drop, which has happened more in the domestic markets, is sort of bottomed out. So my question is, uh, despite the massive supply that has come, you've also put up new capacity, which is also coming online and other players have also. Despite that, you think that this uh, overall uh, drop in realization has, has bottomed out? Uh, I just wanted to understand if that understanding is correct, and if yes, uh, why would that be, despite a lot of supply coming in? 
See, sales realization is not completely only linked to the capacity available. Yes, uh, one of the important factors is availability of material. It is not a kind of a commodity product, but it is not a totally commodity product. Ours is a drug input. So there are something like uh, customers where we have our product registered and they continue to come out. Uh, so capacity will affect, but not to 100%. Second, my answer why uh, we feel that the price realization dropping has bottomed out is based on the input that we are getting from our customers that uh, the demand has, uh, their domestic demand has picked up again. The overall uh, pipeline inventory at various stages which have got stuck in during the last two years has now uh, got normalized and probably we are ex getting orders at the similar levels as we were uh, or to a large extent uh, at those levels. I, I would think that the additional capacity should not uh, have any kind of an effect on our uh, realization going forward. It will have some effect, but we have also taken measures to de-risk that by, I mean, attempting at better quality customers, uh, going for uh, larger export markets and tying up with better uh, distributions in international. So you don't think that will be margin dilution or, or uh, it will not, it will, it will not hamper your margin improvement from there? Our personal feel is that the margins have bottomed out at this moment. Uh, uh, I mean, the sales realization has bottomed out. And from here onwards, we are seeing small uh, improvement in domestic markets. So going forward, it will be very small, but incremental growth in the realization. Uh, at the same time, there is a there is a, there is a softening up of raw metal prices. So that will add on to the margin. Our approach is uh, uh, that uh, we should rely more on exports. So that would give us much more comfort. Got it. And uh, in terms of the API business, uh, so this PLI benefit that you have is based on your production. And uh, it doesn't matter whether you're exporting or you're selling it in the domestic market. It's most, more based on production. Is that understanding fair? Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. It is directly linked to production. Got it. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. That's all. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Anupam Agarwal from Lucky Investment Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question was if you can call out uh, the prices of the three products in the API business that we are uh, putting capex for. Uh, you mentioned in your opening remarks prices have sort of corrected, uh, which has led to a lower uh, gross uh, turns for our business. Uh, can you put pricing in the last uh, six, eight months of those APIs? Uh, say, as I already mentioned, the prices of these APIs, see, I'm basically referring to, say, prices of three major uh, API which we have taken the PLI uh, thing, Betamethasone, Dexamethasone, and Predicilone. So, Betamethasone was, say, in the range of running around $820 a kilo. Now, imports are happening at something like... Uh, sorry, small. your voice is a little muffled, sir. Uh, can you repeat again, please? Yeah, so I, I was saying that uh, I can talk about uh, three major APIs for which we have taken the PLI sanction, say, betamethasone, dexamethasone, and prednisolone. Uh, say, for betamethasone, the earlier prices about a year back was about 825 US dollars for, per kilogram. Now, they have softened up to, say, 740. But, uh, and same way for dexamethasone, which was around 400, has gone down to about 345 or so. Uh, prednisolone uh, was also in the same range of about 425, has gone to now 350. These kind of pricings are for uh, those unregistered sources. But if you look at the exim data, the imports happening from the registered source continue to be done at the the, the prices which were prevailing about a year back. There's no major correction in those prices. Understood, understood. Uh, secondly, uh, sir, you made a comment that the working capital in API business will be slightly stretched. Uh, can you uh, allude to versus the capital business, uh, what will be the working capital like in the API business? I was more referring to the capsule business. In capsule business, we had seen better cash uh, rotations uh, in the last two, three years during COVID period. 
they get got a bit stressed now and uh, maybe our uh, volume of business is also tripled over last 3 years so working capital cycles are in the uh, range of about 90 days in our capsule business uh, but i anticipate in api business it will be a little bit higher uh, 90 to 120 days is what we expect in api all right and uh, would the api business be at a slightly higher uh, margin compared to overall uh, group level of 18 20% Yes, I think margins in API business purely depend on type of customer to whom you sell and kind of certifications and kind of monograph standard that you supply. To. So uh, to begin with, in, in first year when we are targeting domestic uh, generic players, the margins would be limited. But going forward in the third year uh, or fourth year when our target is uh, regulated market customers, we expect a reasonably good margin. Understood. That's all from my side. I'll uh, I'll come back in the queue if I have any. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Umang Shah from India Bridge Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, sir, with respect to the Mexican order, uh, is the fret price included in our contract price or is it uh, something that we take a response? No, no. Could you repeat your question, please? I could not catch it. Yeah, uh, my question was with respect to the order that we are supplying to Mexico, the prep cost, uh, is it included in the pricing or is it something that is that, that we have no control over? No, no, no. As I, uh, there is no fixed pricing there. It's a pricing will be the prevailing market price. Sure. Uh, and sir, any, uh, uh, what are the contracts like that? Uh, are you getting any interest on the HPMC capital that I'm looking to sell? And is that domestic or is it export? HPMC domestic market is lesser than what it is in the international market, but we see that in domestic also a lot of uh, products are getting introduced in HPMC. Older, uh, a lot of Nutra and uh, Herbal products are going into HPMC. The demand traction is there in domestic market as well. Right, sir. Uh, right, sir. I will get that in the queue if I have any more questions. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Praveen Sharma, an investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Sir, so, can I have an audible? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my first question is, sir, uh, um, in this API business, since we are doing significant dilution, uh, these private equity guys, they are bringing some expertise to enable us to penetrate the regulated market, or it's just the money which they are bringing onto the table? At this moment, uh, of course, uh, there is no such uh, commitment from their side, but I believe uh, most of them will give this value at advice and service to us. Uh, I believe they have uh, investors who are placed based in the uh, uh, US and all that. So okay. they will probably be able to help us. Okay. And uh, my second question is, sir. Uh, uh, just to you know understand in on one of the slides in this api it's uh, 23 slide number pli scheme it's written for fermentation based product, product incentive for fy 25 to 28 would be 20 percent and then 29 would be 15 and would be 30 percent 10 percent in 30. now uh, yeah. this is 10, 20 15 10 are basically uh, you know uh, the the, the the percentage in terms of uh, from the revenue stop line means 20% of the revenues, whatever revenue you do, because now that uh, minimum utilization thing has gone. So this is the minimum. Uh, this is what? Yes, your so understanding is right. Uh, the revenue from that particular product. Product. Okay. So so uh, the uh, the incentive per kg will also fluctuate depending on utilization. It's no, the scheme is already fixed. In scheme is already fixed the uh, price uh, qualification price for which the incentive will be applicable. For each of these products, incentive amount per kilogram is already fixed. But that is the minimum uh, price uh, which you have to sell, and then uh, you know if we sell it higher. No, 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 no. no. It, it was no, no. There is no correlation between the selling price and incentive. The price quoted in the scheme was only for the purpose of qualifying for the purpose of incentive. So this 20-15 percent doesn't mean anything, no? that, that makes a fixed thing. Whatever you produce, you will get this fixed. No, no, no. For example, for 
Redney's alone, we have quoted something like 23,399 rupees. So mm-hmm. I am eligible for 20% incentive of that price. So irrespective of quantity, okay. so that's the ceiling. Yeah. ceiling, that is the ceiling. Okay. Yeah, that, that's the ceiling on which we are eligible. Mm-hmm. And sir, uh, uh, you know, uh, you said that, uh, you know, in the re- once we penetrate the regulated market in the three years, uh, it will be 2.7x, so uh, uh, the asset term. So basically, we are looking at 350 crores uh, on the capex of 130 crores, correct? That is the uh, that is the way we are looking at it. Yes, it should be. And for so, so just to clear, because it was slightly confusing, the first year will be 50% uh, utilization, which means uh, how much will be, uh, you know, you already gave the prices, but the ballpark, how much will be the revenue accretion from uh, the top line acquisition from API business? Uh, we are expecting uh, the first year revenue since the small volume lab is starting in uh, uh, Q3 and uh, the business will have some sort of a lag for the validation. We expect about revenue of about uh, 50 to 65 crores of uh, the first year. And uh, in the year after that, sir, uh, it will be, uh, you know, around one, when? So you said two, uh, two times, so that's 260 crore, 130 into two, uh, when we will be reaching? I think year three, we should be reaching around two times. Okay. So year uh, 25. Our phase, phase, phase two capacities of the fermentation also comes on board. Uh, mm-hmm. that, that, that's the time when probably our whole volume will come into play. And the year three would be the first full year of operation for that, full capacity. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Piyush Jain from NX Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Thank you, um, uh, Mr. Mundia, to organizing this call. Uh, sir, first question I want to understand since this is the first call we are having. Uh, what has happened over the years, last two, three years, something where we were doing some eight to eight, nine, ten percent of margin, and suddenly company is in the range of around eighteen to twenty percent? Can you throw some light on this? Yeah. Uh, yes, Pushy. Initially, in my opening remarks itself, I said that uh, hitherto we were operating with the traditional uh, capsule manufacturing machine which were producing about 1 million capsules per 24 hours to 1.5 million capsules per 24 hours. We used, we had done improvisation in-house and maximum capacity was about 1.5 million capsules per 24 hours. Now, in last three years, in 2018, December, we launched our first machine. We did a uh, joint kind of a collaborative effort with an external robotics company where they made a customized design machine for us, which started producing 2.5 million initially, and later on about 5 million capsules. This was the big breakthrough that made the whole change. And as I said, mentioned in my earlier remark, the savings in terms of power, manpower, wastages, and uh, higher uh, kind of a better quality, uh, all these added on to the operational efficiencies. So these operational efficiencies added on to our bottom. Okay, sir. Got it. Sir, uh, one more point. Uh, small, small thing. Uh, sir, you said next year, next second order will be around 1.8 billion capsules. So how much it will translate into a revenue? Uh, in in amount billion capsules, HPMC on an average price of about uh, 250 rupees per thousand. Uh, so, how much it will work? It should be about uh, 40 crores, 40 to 45. Should 40 crores. Okay. Uh, yeah, one of your uh, some interview, I think I heard, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that starting uh, you were doing some fermentation process, this API, and then, then you revised to some different process. Is it something which we then we start something and then we change something? which will have any bearing and impact on our uh, profitability something. And sir, what would be the margin in the API business? Like in capsule business, you are doing around 18 to 20 percent. So what will be the margin trajectory in API business? Sir, over to you. Uh, I think your first question was uh, about the margins in capsule business. As you 
Final of 18 percent is our current margin. Probably it will improve a bit. APL business, uh, as I already mentioned, that uh, uh, being the first year and partly operational, probably we should be happy to do kind of a break-even cash. When 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 it is ramp up fully, 100 or 80 90 percent capacity basis. Yeah, I think they they are. We have indicated in our earlier presentation. We should be. Uh, it depends on the. Uh, type of market. In the third year, when about about 30 percent, 35 percent revenue comes from regulated market export, they should be in ranges of about 20 percent plus. Okay. On fermentation process, any change in fermentation process? No. We, we yes yes we are uh, still on the fermentation track only. Our our whole, all these three products are fermentation at two stages. All long chain production processes having about 12 to 14 steps. Two steps for fermentation, rest for chemical synthesis. Chemical uh, fermentation, then there are about 10 or 11 steps of chemical synthesis. Again, another round of fermentation, then a couple of synthesis steps. So fermentation is the heart of the whole process. Okay, so, sir, just last question. In three years' time, let's say just in, uh, assume for FI27 or something, what type of mix you see as an actual capsule consolidated business? Right now you are doing capsule business 170 odd crore. This capacity is also being getting added from 18 billion capsule to 22 billion plus you are also going in uh, this vegetarian capsule. Plus API will also ramp up and let's say a second year or third year operation. So what would be the revenue mix? It will be around 2 250 crore from capsule business and how much from the uh, API business? What could be, we can see the number of potential basis revenue top line. I think, see, if I, uh, the fourth year, third or fourth year of API business where we expect a regulated market business, uh, we, we probably, uh, might touch the original forecast that we have given, 2.7 times the asset turn in case of API business and uh, Capsule business, we have already said that we will be doing 2.7 times. So, can I say 130 crore capex 2.7 times is around works out around 300 to 350 crore from API business? Yes, in the year when we are able to touch about 35% exports to the market. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Vivek Joshi from BP Capital LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, I'm audible, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, thanks for uh, starting this uh, call, call thing. It's very helpful for investors. And uh, my questions are mainly regarded to the biogenics uh, subsidiary. So I want to understand that now that you know the minority shareholding is also now significant post this investment. So what is the current? Uh, equity that natural capsules hold, what is the block of equity, and what is debt that's given, will that be repaid, so could you give some color, and what's the current quarterly expenses under the biogenics? See, natural capsule currently holds 90%, uh, minority shareholders 10%, uh, natural capsule has invested about 20 crores into equity and has given 20 crore long term uh, unsecured loan to them, uh, to the biogenics. Uh, the next question was your quarterly expenses. At this moment, uh, uh, the, uh, including R and D and all that, uh, I think uh, um, we are we are incurring about uh, 20 lakhs odd uh, per month. Okay, 20 lakhs per month. That is not actually translating in the difference in your standalone and. Uh, Consolidated, so maybe you can get back to me. Later so, so no, no. So this uh, uh, we have started doing only from this quarter onwards. Still, okay. either to it was it was being absorbed by natural capsules. Fair enough. So this twenty crores that's been given, uh, what interest rate has it been given at? Like, because since and we we have a loan agreement where we have said uh, the applicable uh, our bank rate, whatever the uh, rate at which uh, natural capsule is borrowing, will be the same rate applicable. So will this continue with this investment or will that capital now come back to uh, natural capsules post this investment of 80 crores or whatever, like 75 crores? I think I, I presume that over a period of time I will get converted into equity or come back depending on how it turns because uh, the, as for the agreement with uh, banks and uh, with the investor, 
uh, it will be withdrawn only after repayment of loans or their exit. Okay. So the other loans exist on the books of Biogenics or do they exist on the loans of uh, books of uh, natural capsules? I presume it is of the Biogenics. Okay. So the other loans are the another Biogenics. One last question is that this investment of 75 crores, was this the amount that we were looking to raise or this is something the investments investor said that we want to invest at least 25% because it seems a very large dilution. That's, I mean, I'm probably repeating a point. I mean, but so was it that they wanted minimum 20-25% hence the, large, the amount was decided? So uh, even at this stage also it is coming in two tranches. The agreement is for 75 but we are initially taking only 15. The second one will be with the mutual agreement. 25 crores will be only if you decide to go ahead. Okay, 25 crores only if you decide to go ahead. No, initially 50 crore is the infusion. Second tranche would be depending on the need based in case we see some opportunity for the investment or merger acquisition. So both have a right to refuse or they have a put option like they can take if they want? No, no it, it has to be done with the mutual consent. Both are good. So, I mean, so just to understand is that if we take only 50 and for whatever reason the projections are better, so the dilution will be less. Is that what like, is that what the understanding is? Yes, yes, obviously. It will be proportionate. It will be proportionate. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you so much. All the best. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Ashutosh Agrawal from NB India. Please go ahead. Yeah, my question is related to APA division mainly now that uh, uh, earlier we were thinking that we will be able to raise 50% capacity utilization and uh, we have the soft commitments or the contracts as well. So uh, how that will impact uh, overall situation like since we have the soft commitments and uh, we were not able to reach to the 50% utilization. No, the capacity utilization has gone down in the year one is due to delay. Mm -hmm. Commitments still, yeah, yeah, commitments are still there. There are some commitments uh, for taking technical grade of API from some of the foreign buyers. Those still stand. Okay, and second year we are expecting uh, some around 60% utilization, right? Or yeah, we said 50% here. Okay, and the margin will be improved like about 2% uh, when we will be into the regulated markets from either year 3 or max by year 4, right? Is my understanding correct? Yes, yes. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so 60% will be reflected uh, on natural capsules uh, balance sheet uh, and PNL account consolidated after yeah. uh, 3 to 4 years. Okay, so uh, with the interest more in natural biogenics by the foreign investor, I think Somerset is one of the FII. So do we have a plan of demerger in the longer time frame uh, if that is like mutually decided by the natural capsule boards and uh, the Somerset investors? Yeah, it could be one of the possibilities, yes. Technical listing is always a possibility. Okay, but that is that will be like the long term plan maybe after four to five years. As of now, the main focus is next three years to utilize Absolutely. the plan. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so is there any uh, unknown or uh, unseen risk in execution of the projects in the next three years, which may be because of the China or maybe some other macroeconomic factor? I think China's story is playing out to our advantage that worldwide. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a need for China plus uh, supply chain. Okay. And I think uh, the Chinese inconsistency in terms of pricing also is making uh, some of the pharma companies to look for alternative stable sources. And the fact that we are going to be one of the few integrated players across the world, out of China, probably the only one, uh, where we are doing the manufacturing right from the base fermentation probably we would be able to commit uh, prices on a longer run and uh, we should get preference in terms of uh, both large domestic uh, pharma companies so in the international market. Okay, and since the Somerset is also investing via their healthcare fund, so do they have or since they, are, they may be holding more than 10%, so 
are they helping us to get like more contracts because since they are in touch with many many of the european based pharmaceutical companies and they are investing via the same fund so do we see any like more improved opportunity for ramping up the api business while uh, they have not committed to do so but i presume they will do it ultimately because they do have investments in various companies outside india also and uh, there are uh, their partners are also from some of these uh, regulated countries okay okay thank you so much for taking the questions and all the very best thank you ashish thank you before we move to the next question we would request participants to limit their questions to two during the initial round we have the next question from the line of aniban mannav an investor please go ahead yeah hi thank you for the opportunity and thank you for hosting the phone call for the first time uh, my first question would be what would be the revenue in each one of fy24 and for the full year fy24 so you are referring to the natural capital or the api business yeah uh, both both considering capitals and api both for h1 and the full year so we as i have already said that uh, we are we are seeing uh, um, we are seeing some stability in the uh, realization so and the volume remaining consistent we probably can forecast uh, similar revenues and going up uh, but because of the addition of capacity uh, okay uh, a ballpark number uh, in for h1 and h2 uh, you can provide i think we we have gross assets in the range of about 100 crores we do about 2 to 2x kind of things over a period of full year all right all right all right and mexico will start contributing from q2 right yes we hope so yes all right all right thank you thank you all the best thank you we have the next question from the line of suruchi parmar from nx wealth management please go ahead yeah good uh, good evening sir and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity uh just i would like to have a clarity on the api uh, business part like uh, you are doing with the commendation process so uh, like uh, uh, i have uh, read somewhere that uh, a jv of ipsca is also into the same uh, feradal api uh, become a person and primitive to learn so can you uh, just uh, throw some light on this like uh, is they are doing with the same process or you are only one with the fermentation process Ma- madam could you please repeat your question i was not able to catch your question yeah so uh, actually you are doing with the the steroidal apis of dicamethasone and remediation loan with the fermentation process so uh, can you uh, just throw some light that uh, i have read somewhere that jv of ipsca is also there with the same uh, steroidal api so are are yours only the uh, um, fermentation process or they are also doing with the same process or what is the difference in both yeah yeah so so the companies what you are referring they are actually importing advanced intermediates from china and then converting into two or three steps and selling those apis whereas what we are our whole process is a completely backward integrated process where we are doing for base intermediate in india and uh, we are we are uh, i mean doing completely two stages of fermentation and 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 uh, uh, about 10 steps of synthesis okay okay so this is the difference okay yeah. okay okay fine and uh, so uh, just to, uh, this uh, steroidal api you will do only for domestic sales or later further you will go and export also in this yeah we we we, uh, we will be going for exports and okay. uh, we hope to do the regulated market exports in year 3 and 4 in, uh, in which year you you might go for this uh, export of these expected 
No, I, I could not understand your question. Uh, in in uh, these exports, uh, when when will you enter the market in exports in this APIs means uh, the target for this in which year? Uh, target for entering into exports. Yeah. For our our W market probably year two, and reg market will be year three or four. Okay. 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 Fine. So uh, for that, some audits will be needed, like UGMP and US, USFD approval. You need to take uh, audit has to be done. Yes, obviously, yes. UGMP will be done. And, uh, USFD audit will be triggered by the uh, buyer in US market. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Godwin Fernandez, an investor. Please go ahead.